Discuss the CEO of Flex and Strategy Group, Callie Williams Yost. Uh, Callie is an authority on workplace flexibility. The key word there, flexibility. Hi there, Callie. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. Uh, so we were just saying Amazon isn't the only company recalling its employees. Uh, but is there any data out there that shows being in the office versus working from home actually increases productivity and hence the bottom line for these companies? Well, thank you for having me this morning. It's great to be here. And I will tell you, with RTO mandates, it does feel a little bit more like Groundhog Day than Labor Day. And indeed, employers like Amazon, they are doubling down. Here's the challenge. Old work models were already becoming obsolete and more flexible. COVID simply accelerated a trend that was already underway, but it was a crisis-driven execution. So we now have the opportunity to be more strategic and intentional as we reimagine and rethink how we're going to work going forward. Here's the problem. Employers and employees are not on the same page about how, when, and where that is going to happen. Thus, the resistance, and part of that indeed is that you have employers that that have some very solid, valid concerns about talent development, productivity, and culture, but they often don't have solid metrics to support those concerns. And you know, because it was a crisis-driven execution in the pandemic, it's hard to gauge what productivity was. And I'm going to tell you, as an expert who's been doing this for many, many years, oftentimes there wasn't great productivity data before COVID about how we were working. Mm. So again, we really have to think how we're going to go forward with this. So if employers don't have solid metrics to back up, you know, uh, the recalling of employees, I mean, how important is it for employers to be flexible, especially in a post-COVID world? Are employers risking tanking morale and productivity if they aren't more flexible? Well, here's where we are. We are at a clash of contexts right now where employers, again, as I said, and employees are not on the same page. You do have employers who truly believe that if everyone returns to the office on a set number of days, then the in-person interactions that will improve the outcomes they're concerned about, somehow those will magically happen. Unfortunately, they often don't. So that's why on the other side, you have employees who feel they they always end up sitting in an office doing the same work they did when they were working remotely, and they legitimately are asking why. Why am I here? Because being in the same location doesn't automatically lead to the collaboration that optimizes those outcomes that employers are concerned about. In other words, in, in the office does not equal in person. And that's yeah. something that or employers and employees have to come together and ask the question, what do we need to do and how, when and where do we do it best? That's true. In office does not translate to in person because oftentimes, you know, I love coming to work. I love seeing my colleagues. Um, but when I need to get work done, sometimes I'll just lock myself in the office and put on my headphones and just get to work on my computer. So and, you know, there have been days where I've just been in and quickly out. Um, what are your thoughts on hybrid schedules? I mean, where employers are trying to compromise and say, OK, fine, work from home two to three days a week, but come in the office at least you know, two days a week. Are there any benefits to that? So I think we're, yeah, I think we're asking the wrong question. Uh, we keep asking the question, okay, so how many days in the office? And so we're leading with where, and again, because we're leading with where, those key activities that lead to the outcomes we want to advance by being in person are not necessarily happening. What we have to ask is first, what aspects of talent development, of productivity, of culture benefit from more in-person interaction? And when do those happen? And where do those happen? And then let the answer to that question drive the number of days on site in the office, at a client site, at home, at another remote location. But you see, our research and experience have shown that the sweet spot for people is two to three days a week on site. And if you get to those number of days based on the work, then people have a clear understanding of why they are coming together and will prioritize those activities. But here's the important part. You will also talk about and and identify what you will be doing when you're not together. Because if you're in person three days a week, Again, you want to prioritize the things that really matter when you're together, but you are not going to be together for two days. So what are you doing then? What is better done when you are not in the same place? And those are the conversations we have to be having first. But when you lead with the number of days, you miss that. And that's that. why people are not understanding and resisting. Thank you for reframing that conversation. Very important stuff. <laughs> Kelly Williams-Yost, appreciate it. Thanks.
Meet the secret network of pilots and volunteers helping women access...